me why I dress this way A crazy drag me off a half job, yeah Is there a point to all these fancy clothes With all these blockers from your head down to your toes Thanks for joining us. I'm Calista Solon, and you're watching NLC Trans. Tonight, I'm um, here with my usual co-host, Tara Alexander, and, uh, of course, Ron Sarasha, who is on our show frequently and hopefully will be on more frequently. And uh, anyway, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. And uh, I believe you had um, some news items you wanted to share. Do you want to go into that right now? If you like. <laughs> um, well, the the... The two news items that um, came across today were um, uh, one of the big ones is um, Massachusetts has filed suit against the federal government. Yeah, <laughs> that is really cool. Um, the, this is actually interesting because um, you, you hear the argument a lot from conservatives, from libertarians, from liberals alike that um, the definition of marriage, who can get married, is a state's rights issue. Sure. that this is something that should be left to the states, even according to Dick Cheney. Then why do we have a federal law that defines marriages between a man and a woman if it's right. a state's rights issue? <laughs> yeah. So Massachusetts Attorney General... You're referring uh, to DOMA. DOMA, Defense of Marriage Act. Martha Coakley filed suit today against the federal government over the Defense of Marriage Act. Coakley says that DOMA interferes with Massachusetts' ability to define and regulate marriage. The Commonwealth has allowed same-sex marriages since 2004. And the DOMA, um, she calls it discriminatory, and it undermines and complicates legal matters in Massachusetts because it often puts the state in conflict with the federal government. Um, among many of its arguments, Coakley's suit argues that DOMA requires Massachusetts to violate the constitutional rights of its citizens by treating married heterosexual couples and married same-sex couples differently when, do when doling out Medicaid benefits and Social Security payouts, that, that being federal money. Sure. So the, basically their, their, their lawsuit says that because there's this federal definition of marriage as being between a man and a woman, they cannot meet their constitutional requirement to treat their citizens equally, which they've deemed <laughs> right. means everybody. Yeah. You know, and any two consenting adults are allowed to enter into a marriage in Massachusetts, and uh, except when it comes to how they're treated on uh, in certain circumstances when the government gets in, when the federal government gets involved. So it would be very interesting to see where it goes. Um, um, Massachusetts, they, she gives another example. Massachusetts has given federal money to maintain a military cemetery, but they're not allowed to bury same-sex spouses in that cemetery. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Doma, Doma, obviously Doma has to go. Um, well, and, and right, there's, there's two major parts to DOMA, for anyone who's not familiar with it. Um, the, the, the crux of it is it's a federal law that defines marriage between a man and a woman, and there's two consequences of that, primarily. One is that um, federal employees, employees of the federal government, um, even if they're, for instance, a federal employee living and working in Massachusetts, as far as the, their, their federal employer is concerned, they're unmarried, even if they're legally married within the state. You can be legally married in Massachusetts working for the federal government 
and not and your spouse will not receive benefits your spouse will not be eligible for the for the health care that you're supposed to be getting through your your employer because your employer is the federal government and That's then the, and then the second wrong. side of it is um, marriage like driver's licenses like lots of other things um, has traditionally been recognized through a reciprocal act I forget what it's called um, Stressing to remember it. Uh, <laughs> I want to say states' rights, but I'm not sure that's correct. Yeah, there's there's um, something something some, a state reciprocal. It's a reciprocal contract law that basically says that if you sign a contract in this state, it'll be honored by the other 49. Right. Sort of like a bilateral agreement. Right. Um, there are exceptions to it. Um, the recent Department of Justice memo called a few of them out. But it's generally when they cross into what a state deems criminal activity, then they're not ob obligated to recognize the contract. Um, with the exception, thanks to DOMA, of marriage. <laughs> your heterosexual marriage can be recognized by other states, but your homosexual marriage can won't be because of DOMA. Right. So states' rights issues, um, I believe there's 42 states that have laws on the books that prevent same-sex marriage. 29 of them have constitutional amendments. Those states have made those decisions. There are six that allow it, except when the federal government gets involved. Except to the extent <laughs> that the federal government is involved. Yes. Right, right. So, for example, although my husband and I were married in 2004 in Massachusetts and we received a civil union in Connecticut the year afterwards, uh, we're still filing separate federal tax returns. Right. Right. And you know that's that's which is uh, not only um, we're penalized uh, financially uh, from the government. We also, I mean, that's an additional cost that sure. that we have to incur uh, to you know have our accountant um, to do that. And then you know that's not to mention the hundreds of other uh, rights and privileges uh, to which the federal government would entitle us. If one of us were uh, an, an, the other gender, right? And one of the scary ones that comes up from time to time. There was a case, I think, two months ago. I forget where, but you and your husband could be traveling, and God forbid, get in an, in an accident in another state that doesn't recognize same-sex marriages. And because you're not legally, because they're right. because they don't recognize you as being legally married, you have no. No spousal, benef spousal benefits in the hospital. You're not allowed to visit. You're not allowed to make medical choices. Right, which is particularly ironic, considering that my, you know, that my spouse is a healthcare provider. Yeah. So if I went into the hospital, as you, you know, he'd God be well, forbid, he'd be well qualified to make he, decisions. Right, right, but he he couldn't, you know, uh, legally he could be prevented from, you know, from attending uh, to me. Not even as a healthcare provider, but as uh, but as my spouse. Right, right. Now the the case a couple months ago, and I'm lacking the details, and I apologize, but um, they actually had signed. Um, there's like a, um, there's a legal document that says it's like a power of attorney. If they're incapacitated, you can make legal decisions, and there's another one that allows them to make medical decisions. And she this this um, this couple. Um, had signed that paperwork and she was